Hello everybody, this is Graham Manderson, and today I'm going to be looking at Garden Nation. Now the theme of this game is that you're a part of a clan of little people exiled from the woods and want to build a new town in an abandoned garden basically from the debris you find in the garden of course. You're going to be competing against the other clans to seize control over this new town. Now the gameplay is tr pretty straightforward as well. You're going to be competing to complete common objectives all the while trying to make sure that you're setting yourself up for scoring your secret objectives at the end of the game. You're either going to be building up one of your current buildings or tearing it down. Now that in itself really doesn't sound new or different but this game does have two things that it does differently. First is the turn order. It's not fixed. The current player, once they've finished their actions, is going to decide who's going to go next out of the players who have not currently gone that round. And whoever gets to go last in the round will automatically go first in the next round. But going first only gives you one action to do on your turn. The other really interesting mechanism in this game is where you're going to be performing your actions. The board is made up of seven territories, and each territory has seven areas. If you take an action in the center area of a territory, your next action has to take place in the center territory. So the current action will affect where the next action will be carried out, whether it's by you or another player. Now both of these mechanisms really having you watch what your opponents are doing and making sure that the area you're leaving the board in a position where they cannot finish the objectives before you've had a chance to finish that objective. Of course, there's always that push and pull of what's more important. So, will these interesting mechanisms be enough to have this game be a beautiful flower above all the rest, or will it just end up being a weed that needs to be pulled? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and we'll come back with my final thoughts on Garden Nation. So here's Garden Nation set up for four players. Randomize the tiles to create the board, place the common objective board to one side and shuffle the common objective cards, and deal out four. Place the bramble tokens, the roofs, and the torture cane. Yes, it is a tortoise with a crane on it, off to one side. Each player picks a color and takes the board, tokens, and floors based on the number of players. So in this floor player game, each player is going to get 14 floors. First player is picked, and they will place their population marker at 38, and all others will place it at 35. The first player will put their turn order marker on 1, and the other players are going to be placed off to one side. Score marker start at 0, and finally each player is dealt two end of game objective cards. The game is played over a number of rounds until one player has placed their last floor even if they get floors back later on their turn, and the winner is the one with the most points. In this game, you're going to be getting points for common objectives during the game, your end of game objectives, and from your population. Each round is split into three steps. The player actions, then you check for territory control, which is where you're going to be getting more population, then prepare for the next round. On a player's turn, they will take a number of actions as shown on their turn order track. The first player gets one action, all other players are going to get two actions. When a player takes an action, they can take it anywhere where the torture cane is. For the first move of the game, the first player can place it anywhere, but on subsequent actions, they have to respect the torture cane. There are two actions a player can take on their turn, either construct a building or abandon a building. To construct a building, it must be done in the area where the torture cane is. Each territory has seven areas, and each area has a base cost to add a floor. If the area is currently empty, you just play the base cost and place one of your floors in that area. There are bramble areas as well in all the seven territories, which are wild. If you want to build one here, you must take one of the bramble tokens and place it on the bramble area. It becomes that land type for the rest of the game. If there is an existing building on an area, and it's yours, you can add an additional floor to it. You pay the base cost, then one for each existing floor. You pay the total cost, and add one of your floors onto this building. Now, of course, you cannot build floors on other players' buildings. Whenever you have to pay cost, just move your population marker down. Population is the currency in this game. The other action you can do in your turn is abandon one of your buildings, again in the territory that the torture cane is currently located. You remove all the floors from an area and you gain the number of population back equal to double what you paid to build that many floors. So if the base area was 3 and you have built 2 floors, you would have paid a total of 7 population to build that building. 3 for the first floor and 4 for the second floor. When you abandon it, you receive double that amount, so you get 14 population. This calculation is outlined on your player board, the base cost, and the number of floors. If you abandon a building with a roof, you just return the roof to the general supply. Now one critical point, and this is one of the key to the game, is the movement of the torture crane. When you have completed your action, you move the torture crane to the territory that matches the area you took the action. There are seven areas per territory, and there are seven territories in the entire board. So, if you took an action in this area, you would move the torture crane to this territory. 
For another example, if you took an action here, you'd then move the torture crane to this territory. Once per action, you can also complete a common project. To do that, you must place a roof on a building that you just built, and that building must be part of the common project you wish to score. A building with a roof cannot be used for any other common project, and you cannot add any more floors to that completed building. Once you've placed the roof, take the common project card, move your score marker, and then reveal a new common objective card. When completing a common project, all building heights listed are minimums. If you have more floors in the building, they can still be used for that scoring of that objective. Once you've completed your actions, you'll pick which player of the ones that have not gone this round to take their actions next. There's no fixed turn order. The current player will determine who the next player is. At the end of the round, whichever player went last will automatically go first in the next round. Now beyond the two standard actions, each player starts the game with four ploy tokens, which can be used each once per game. And you can only use one per action that you take. The strategic movement allows you to adjust the torture crane by one territory, either ahead or behind. All the territories are numbered, so if the torture crane was in territory four, you can place a ploy marker and move it to either three or five. Now this does not cost an action. The roof transfer action allows you to move a roof from one of your buildings to another one of your buildings. To do this, you have to do it in the territory that the torture crane is, and you have to have an open building on the same land type in another territory. This does not cost you an action. The last play will actually replace your action. It's the building invasion. In the territory of the torture crane, you can remove another player's building and replace it with your own. Now you must pay the abandonment cost to take over that building, and the players whose building you are taking over will receive that population as well. You must be able to replace a building with the same height as the one you are taking over. Once all the players have had their actions, we go to the territory control part of the round. Go through each territory in numerical order and figure out which player has the majority by counting up the number of floors that they have in that territory. They will receive two population, and if there is a tie, then all tied players will get one population. Once that is done, you prepare for the next round. You move the fourth player's marker down to the first position and remove the other three turn markers and start the next round. This continues until one player has placed their last floor. Even if they do it on their first action and receive floors back from an abandoned action on their second action, the game will still go into the final round. All players can complete their actions and you do one final territory control, then score your secret objective cards and score bonus points on how many population you have left, and the player with the most points is the winner. Let's get back to see what I thought about Garden Nation. So theme and components. They really tried the theme in this one, from the components, which I'll talk about in a bit, to the rulebook. The beginning of the rulebook does have kind of four pages of backgrounds of the different clans, and the back of the book has a little thing about Frida the Torture Crane. So I enjoyed the theme, and felt they did a good job trying to integrate into the gameplay. Now, it fundamentally doesn't mean much to the overall abstract gameplay, as it doesn't affect what you're doing, but it is nice to see a reasonably fleshed out world on a relatively, let's be frank, abstract game. So on to the components. I like them for the most part. The color palette kind of really gives you that early fall look, which is nice. The puzzle pieces all fit together to create the board. Now, I do wish that the costs, the base costs on all these areas were printed on both sides of the area, because although I really like the player pieces, pieces, you know, they all fit together with the different clan elements, they do make it so people have a hard time seeing the base costs, because the floors could be blocking them. If the costs were on both sides of the area, I think that would have helped. The cards, once you've got used to them, are fairly easy to read, but definitely for the first play you want to make sure you're using the uh, back of the book, which clarifies what all the different card means, both the mandatory, the, sorry, the, the common and the secret objectives. You know, many of them require you to have buildings in certain territories, in our first game we messed that up once or twice, but the rulebook does a really good job of outlining kind of what they do. Overall though, I found this is a really nice production. Onto the gameplay. I found many things I actually really liked about this game. The primary two being the, what I would say are the additions to a standard collect something to fulfill an objectives. That is the movement of the torture crane and the player turn order. Most of the other items I actually enjoyed as well, from the decision on when to abandon a building, for example, to the roof management, to the end of game scoring. It all worked pretty well for me and something that I enjoyed. The torture crane did take a little bit to wrap your head around the first time you played, but it ended up being my favorite part of the game. You are beholden to the previous player as to where you can take your first action, so you're always thinking of what your second action is going to be. I found I was constantly looking at the common goals and the positions on the board of the other players, making sure that the torture crane was going, was going to a spot that was not good for the next player. The move might be okay or even good for me, but you know what does it mean for the next player? Will they be able to get a common goal before I'm going to get a chance to get it? 
where can I move the torture crane so that won't happen? But all the while, I still, of course, want to make a good move that's good for me. I just want to make it good for me and bad for the next player. Careful management of your population is important as well. Abandoning a building is critical, not only to getting more population, but sometimes for movement of the torture crane or even freeing up his space so maybe you can build out later to get maybe a secret objective. The player turn order was also a really enjoyable addition to this game. Deciding who goes next or last was at some points critical to the gameplay. The person who goes last does get three actions in a row, so they have an opportunity for a big move. They are able to set up something for themselves over three moves instead of just the normal two. Yes, it's split over the end of the round, but it is still a pretty powerful position to be in. I think my enjoyment of the game came down to the decision space this game. I always felt like I was making meaningful decisions on all my actions. Where I want to take my next action. You know, where I want the next person to take their action. Who I wanted to go next. It all just pleased me in that decision space. Now, the game is not perfect. I did find the common objectives maybe a little too lucky. There were times when one was flipped over and someone just had the perfect board position to take it. I did find that a little too lucky, but on the opposite side, they were required to take an action on a building to score it and put a roof on it. So it wasn't an automatic thing, especially it was getting closer to the end of the game, as most of the end of game scoring requires a building not to have a roof on them to be able to score it at the end of the game. Now, would I recommend this game? Definitely I would. I've played it a number of times now and just find myself so engaged with the gameplay. I like the theme and the components. I really like the decisions I have to make in almost every action I do. Which area to take my first action to set up my second action? And making sure that taking my second action is not going to set up the next player. And I get to decide who the next player is going to be. The scoring of the objectives was interesting as it putting a roof on a building essentially finished it and it can't be used again. This became more critical as the game goes on. I like the basics of the gameplay were simple. You're either adding a floor or abandoning a building. And the abandoning of the building was critical to most of the plays I had, as the management of resources was important, as there were some people who I played with who kind of ran out of resources. I also felt it worked reasonably well at two players, better than I actually thought it was going to. Now, I do think the economy objectives were a bit too lucky and random coming up. And the secret objectives, sometimes you just got two that worked well together or that were worth a lot of points. Now, of course, we can't pick two of the same, but some of them are similar in the objectives. I almost wish there was a, a, maybe a draft, not just a get four, pick two. I also found the game can sometimes drag on as it's up to the players to determine when the game ends. You definitely need someone who is kind of pushing that end of the game. And although I like the extra actions you could take with those, those ploy tokens, I actually wasn't a huge fan of the actions that, it, that allowed you to steal someone else's tower. Yes, it costs you a lot of population, and the person gets a lot of population back. But it never felt good to have one of your secret objectives be unfulfilled just for some lower scoring population. It also seems that the population bonus caps out at 10 points, which really can, can compound that loss of a building to someone else, especially if you're going to be scoring a lot more points on your final objective. Overall, though, I'm going to give this game an 8 out of 10 in the Dice Tower Seal of Approval. I'm really enjoying my plays with this one at the moment, and I enjoyed it at all player counts. The turn order mechanism and the torture crane was definitely a welcome addition to this game. But I do worry with more plays, more cracks will appear and it's going to lower my rating. But for now, this is a game I'm really enjoying. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.